Hey guys, welcome to a presentation of OpenLM. Welcome to our workshop where we'll be installing the latest version of OpenLM, version 4.5. Now, some of you I see are clients, some of you I see are prospects. So you'll see a new installer of OpenLM, you'll see um, a new flow for the installation of OpenLM. And if you're new, well, you'll see how easy it is to install OpenLM, basically. So, what will we be doing today? Let's, uh, let's try to break it down. <clears throat> so first of all, we'll install the OpenLM server. We'll install it on a network server. We'll install the OpenLM broker on a license server, meaning that you have to take the OpenLM broker and install it one broker on each license server. Now all the brokers send information to OpenLM server. Now we will also be installing the OpenLM agent on the workstations to give us a bit more functionality. Now keep in mind that you can operate OpenLM just with the OpenLM server. You don't need the broker, you don't need the agent if you want basic functionality. But if you want to monitor the license manager files themselves, like the debug log, the options file, the license, uh, the license file, then you, you need a broker. If you want extra functionality for the end user, for example, to give him an option to see what's going on right now with licenses, then you'll need to roll out the OpenLM agent. But again, these are optional. Agent, broker, both optional. You don't have to if you cannot install it on license server, you don't have permissions, whatever. Or if you just can't roll out that many uh, applications, that, that many uh, agents. <clears throat> Each organization with their own with their own issues, but let's start with the OpenLM server. First of all, what we'll need to do, we'll need to go to the OpenLM website. Now you might recognize the website, but it's a bit different. Uh, we got a new, a new style. As you can see, we moved to the 21st century. Uh, so all you need to do is go to downloads. And you got OpenLM for engineering licensing, which is the basic product of OpenLM, the core product of OpenLM. We've got a few products here. So we'll just need to click download and it will download the file. Then all we need to do after it's downloaded, <clears throat> we'll get it to where we want the OpenLM server installed. On a network server, on your PC for evaluation, doesn't matter. Where we want it installed, we'll just place it there. Now, from here, it's pretty straightforward. Let's just double click on OpenLM Server Installer. And we get this new installer. We can allow OpenLM to send updates, <coughs> agree to the license terms and conditions, of course, after you read all that, and check for the latest version if you download it way back when, maybe there's the latest version, you can check for that. So click next. We decide where we want it installed. This is the default location. Usually it's the best location. Click install and now it will take anywhere between two to five minutes, something like that, depending on your system. It will install all the files and it also installs a database. Now it will install the OpenLM Firebird database. Uh, this is like the embedded database for trials and uh, for evaluation purposes. After that, you can of course migrate the data to MySQL or SQL Server, but just at the beginning, at initial synchronization, initial installation, this is what we get. Already set up already connected. <clears throat> so we'll just give it a few minutes. And from here, 
after we have everything installed, we'll need to go to the license server. So this is my license server and we'll install the, let's go back there, the OpenLM broker on that license server. Now we're installing the server on a network server. Okay, so let's go back here. Meanwhile, while it's uh, installing, as I said, might take up to five minutes, we'll click on files and let's go see where it's installed. So if we go to C program files 86 and go to OpenLM, OpenLM server, then we have the database here, we have the license file here, and we have log files here. Now, once it, it's done installing, as you see here, it will ask us to activate the license. Now, we can punch in our details right here if we'd like. But I already have a license. So I'll simply click Select File. <clears throat> and I choose the correct license file. It checks it, says that it's OK, and I click Next. And now it asks me if I want to configure OpenLM without installing a broker, or if I want to get the best out of OpenLM, then I can install the broker. Why should I install the broker? Because it provides all of these. It provides added benefits. <coughs> so what do we need to do in order to install the broker? We install the server. Great. We'll need to click Install Broker. And if this is my license server, then start installation right away. But it's not. It's my OpenLM server. I want to get this to my license server. So I'll just click It's not my license server. And then it says it's available for Windows and Linux. And during the installation, we will need to add the OpenLM hostname because the OpenLM broker connects to the OpenLM server. We'll need to tell it where to point. So we'll copy that and click Get Installer. <clears throat> now it will open up the OpenLM server folder with broker installers so we can get the broker that we need. Uh, our license manager, it might be Linux or it might be Windows. In, in this case, it's Windows. So we'll just copy this over to the license server itself. So I already have it copied here. I don't need to wait for it to be, to be copied, of course. I already have it copied. So all we need to do is just double click. If you have an existing OpenLM broker there, like I have here, because I have a demo one, then I can upgrade. But if I want to install a new instance, I click Install, read all this, of course, agree, click Next. Now we can install either R, use R Java 11, or use the broker Java 11, <clears throat> whatever you choose. So we choose where we want it installed. Click Next, and the broker will take anywhere between 10 to, I don't know, 30 seconds, less than a minute to be installed. And once you click Close, it will take a moment, but you'll get the OpenLM Broker Configuration tool. And now you see it asks us to point to OpenLM Server, okay, because we just installed the broker. So it's asking us, oh, where do I point my data? Where do I send my data? Where's the OpenLM server? So we'll do that. We'll just paste it in here. It was Win 10 demo. Click Next. It will try to connect. And now <clears throat> it will try to set up a new license manager. It will test out all the ports and it will sniff the data coming out of that port. And it, if it finds anything that's readable, then it parses it and configures it. So
So, to finish the setup, we need to approve the detected license servers because we detected them here but did not approve them here on the server side. So let's do that. We can either open up the user interface here or we can go back here. But let's see, what did it find? So we'll click close and we see that it found, first of all, this license server, win8olmprod, this is exactly the host name of this license server, and it found two working ports. One port is an Autodesk port, and the other port is a MATLAB port. And it found it and configured it automatically. Now, let's go back to the server configure it on the server side and then we'll go back to the open on broker and see what it actually did and how we can replicate it manually in case it didn't detect it automatically so what do we do first of all let's open up let's say chrome it can work with uh, with uh, uh, edge chrome firefox any of the new browsers you can reach it by going to the programs, OpenLM, and you got the OpenLM Easy Admin User Interface, which you can load up. And you see that it, it points us to localhost at 7019 Easy Admin Index. Now let's say that I, I don't want to access it from the server all the time. I want to access it from my workstation. So I'll just go to my workstation, this is mine, and I'll open up the same link, but instead of localhost, my mistake, instead of localhost, it will be win 10 demo. Meaning that I'm pointing to where I have the OpenLM server installed using port 7019, going to Easy Admin 2 using the HTML index. So <clears throat> now we have this open. It will open and look like this. We'll have the license servers, alerts, and feature usage status. Now, the only thing that I need to do in order to configure those is just click here, approve. So I'll call it Autodesk, save, and it's called Autodesk now. It saved the host name, it saved the port, and now it's waiting for data. It will take it a while. Right here I have 810, I know that's MATLAB. So I'll save that as well. Now you see the status of it, it's waiting for data. It will take uh, anywhere between three to 10 minutes even to get all the information and start streaming um, like rapidly. So let's go back to the broker and see what we need to do. So all we have left to do is simply click restart broker. That's it. It's done. It's sending information to the OpenLM server. We have the connection established. Right here, you see, we see that this is already configured. It configured itself. We got quantity of one. This is still configuring itself. It will take it uh, like a minute more, two minutes more, but it's already getting the quantity. So we see that it's connecting. It's configured. And it was done pretty much automatically. You see that I've done that in about 15 minutes, but that's not fair. I didn't manually configure the license servers. Uh, the only thing I did is just open up the installer and it found all uh, these two FlexLM license managers because the agent can detect, automatically detect FlexLM license managers. It can do that for FlexLM, DSLS, RLM, and RMS. Rest of the, the rest of the uh, types we'll need to configure on our own. 
Sometimes there will be a FlexLM license manager that the broker will just not find, it will not detect, so we'll need to detect on our own. Okay, so let's try to create it. Let's try to manually uh, manually recreate the port. So I'll delete the port, delete the port, and the license server as well. I'll delete it. It's now empty. Delete this. What? So what do we need to do? We get a new installer. We installed it. We have a new installation in the broker configuration tool. What do we do? First of all, we'll need to click on Open ARM Servers. Right click, add Open ARM Server. And you'll need to point it to the correct Open ARM Server. So here I already have it. It's pointing to Win 10 Demo, and I can check connectivity. So right click, add Open ARM Server, change the name, and check connectivity. So that's it. We'll need to apply and move on to the license servers so it's tracking a license server what do we need to do click add license server give it the host name or ip click apply and now we see this license server but where are the ports we had uh, two ports in there so we can click detect and it will do the same thing that it did before it will run the check it will run the test and automatically define these two ports again, as you see, 600, 801. But <laughs> we wanted to do that manually, not using the detect. So we'll click on the license server itself. We'll click add port. Now there are a few things that we'll need to do. First of all, we'll give it the right port number. So it was 600, it was FlexLM. It has a license file, so let's click Set Path Manually, Add License File, and let's go find it. It's in Autodesk License Manager, and we got the license right here. We'll click Watch License File, so the license file will be sent out into OpenLM Server. If this is not clicked, the data is not being sent out, it's just for show. That's it. So make sure this is clicked. So we click apply, click yes. And then it created a few things here. We got, we got three things. We got commands, we got vendors, and we got log files. So what did we do until now? We just handled the license file. Now, Let's see if it gets the correct output from the license manager. Now, when I say output, let's open up the license manager. Let's click here. This is the output. You might recognize it. This is what we call license output. It holds how many licenses there are and current usage and all that. So that is not defined by the license file. The license file, let me show it to you, it simply defines which packages I have and, and how many licenses I have in that. So this is defined by both status and data inquiry, where it simply finds an lmutil and it runs this command on that lmutil. Now lmutil is something FlexLM uses and each License Manager has his own util file, so we use that util file. What do we do? How can we define that? I don't want to find that here, 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 and there, here, and everywhere. So we just go to commands. We'll need the path of it. So the path was Autodesk Network License Manager, and I have lmutil right here. It usually comes with the License Manager, with the vendor itself. So I'll put it here. And click update click apply and now if I go to data inquiry I see that is using the lmutil of the license manager not the default open lm lmutil but the license manager lmutil and then it runs this execute command which basically gives us the same as running this 
status command. The same as running in, as this. Same thing. This one, this one, same. So same for the status. You get the status if it's up or what's going on there. Next thing that we'll need to define is options file and the vendor if we have that. So I have a new vendor, but if we don't, just click add vendor. New vendor will be ADSK Flex. This is the exact name of the vendor which we find in the license output. We define the path of it. So it's again placed in the same location. We got options file, click open and watch options file. If you don't click watch options file, it will not send data to the OpenOM server, then it will be here just for show. Okay? Same as the license file. If you don't watch it, it won't send it. Next, you go to log files, we'll click add log file, and we'll choose the right type. So in our case, it's FlexLM debug log file. And let's select the path of the debug log. So we'll go here and There we go, debug log. This is adskflex.log. Click on that, select the vendor that we just created, and that's it. Click apply. Now, you can watch files by pattern. Let's say you've got a log file, and the log file is called uh, adskflex0101-2019. Uh, and then you'll have another one a day after, that's 0201-2019 and 0301-2019. So OpenLM can watch that pattern. It will watch the changes and it will know to take from the next one, not from the old one. So let's click Apply and Restart Broker. Because now we're done. We configured everything. We have four things to configure. Just remember, four things to configure. You got, first of all, license output, which you configure using the LMUtil. This is license output. You got the license file, which you configure using the port here. Click show. You can configure it. You'll have to configure the options file. Now, this is only if you have it. If you're not using an options file, don't configure it, of course, but you will need to configure the vendor name. And lastly, the log file. You'll need to configure the debug log of your license manager. Now, some license managers will have a debug log, some will not. Some will ha have an, a type of LMUtil, some others will have some type of XML file. It really depends <clears throat> on what you want to monitor because each license manager acts a bit differently. So that's pretty much it. So we clicked apply, we clicked restart broker, and all the information is now streaming to OpenLM. And again, if we wanted to, to confirm the license manager, then all, all we needed to do is click approve on the red line and approve it just the same way as we did here. But okay, let's say that you don't want to install the broker. You don't want to install it manually. You don't want to install it automatically. You're just not allowed to install it. You want to connect to OpenLM directly. You want as little hassle as possible. So what do you do? First of all, let's say that we want to monitor another license manager now. If this license manager is on Win8 OLM Prod, I have another one <clears throat> on Win8 OLM Prod 3. So I'll use that. I want to monitor that, but I'm not allowed to get a broker there. Let's say I'm not allowed to get a broker. So what do I do? I go to the OpenLM server machine. And now I'll simply click, uh, I'll simply uh, uh, search for server. But if I don't find it, I can go to OpenLM right here and open up the OpenLM server. It's the OpenLM server configuration tool. So this is how it looks like. 
So if you want to configure, you don't want to configure uh, to install a broker, but you do want to configure a new license manager, so you simply click Add. You give it, uh, you give it a name. So let's call it AutoCAD Autodesk 2. It is a FlexLM. I select the type. I'll give it the correct time zone. So it's Jerusalem time zone. If there is token, flex token support, then uh, if it's required, then I can enable it. If it's a triad, then I can enable it and put in three different host names. But all you need to do is simply input the host name. So it's win8 prod3, port 600. I hope I have connected connection for it. It's win8 OLM prod3. Okay, and then after we have the port, the host name, we're not using a broker, so this is not checked. Let's click test. And that's it. We got the license output. Now keep in mind that with this you only get the license output. You don't get the bug log, you don't get license file, and you don't get options file. Why do you need all those? Because it completes the picture. Let's say that you only rely on the license output. And that's a problem. You only get license usage and license quantity. Who is using? How many you have? But if you have if you have packages, it's not here. It's in the license file. Where can we get the expiration dates of your licenses? It's not here. It's in the license file. Where can we get denials? Denials are not here. They're in the debug log. Where can we get the options file configurations that I had? It's not here. It's in the options file. So now you understand why you need the OpenLM broker. You need a local <clears throat> a local component, a local component to read all the local files. If you wanna, if you wanna con connect, connect remotely, you don't not using a broker, so you don't have access to those files. You only have access to the port streaming out of the of the license manager, which is which is okay for most uh, for most um, clients, for most license managers, for most vendors, but some again use packages. Uh, if you want to validate information, you can validate it uh, using the debug log only. If you want to get denials, it's from the debug log. So you see why you need, uh, why it's better to have the broker there, because you get a lot more. But if you can't, you can still get pretty much the same. So we tested, we saw that it's, uh, we do get it, great. So all we need to do is click apply. And we'll need to make sure that the OpenLM server and license server have the same time zone configured here. So that's it. We're done. It was that easy. Just select the type, add description, time zone, host name, port, boom, you're done. Click apply and you're done. So all we need to do is go to the interface and we see that it updated with the new license manager with remote sampling, because I don't have a broker here. I do have a broker, here I don't. Here I'll get an exact representation of denials of my license, uh, of my license expiration dates, of different packages I have there, while here I won't get that. I do get the quantity, if someone is using it, I will get that, I will see it, no problem. I'll get all the same information, but it's less than what you can get with the broker. This is why we recommend installing the broker as well. Now, there are some license managers which you cannot install a broker. You cannot use a broker. For example, if you want to use HASP, HASP then it's just from here. This is the way to configure HASP. You don't need an OpenLM broker. And that's just about it. Uh, we installed, configured, and explained OpenLM in 30 minutes. Um, it's, again, a small system. It's just one licensed server. If you have many, it might take a bit longer. But we 
generally say generally say that you get the whole system up and running with extensions that you need with the uh, all the license managers that you want to monitor with brokers or without brokers you got a day of work ahead of, ahead of you to get everything sorted out and that's it you got openlm set up up and running on your system Now, if you want any information regarding what we've talked about today, like, okay, that's how to define a FlexLM license manager, but how do I define a HOSP one? How do I, how do I define an LMX one? They don't have an LMUtil, what do I do? Well, you go to our lovely website, the openlm.com website, and you just do a search. So you want LMX, just write in, type in LMX. And you got interface with LMX. You got a how to here, HD is how to. And you got a step by step instructions of what needs to be done. Same thing if it's, uh, let's say, HOSP. See, so check that. Sentinel HOSP, HD. So let's click on that. And we got a step by step on how to install HOSP. And we also got this lovely guy uh, explaining it. And that's it, guys. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. There's a little questions box, uh, a little chat box that you can use. The GoToWebinar has that in their interface. Just go ahead, ask. I'll be happy to answer. Anything that you would like to know I didn't go over, go ahead. It's your time. Okay, I see that John is asking about the configurations. So, John is asking if uh, configuring the broker is always done automatically. Uh, now, probably you missed that, but sometimes it will be done automatically. You simply click detect and it will detect everything that you have there. But sometimes it won't. You need to define it manually. In that case, you can go to the OpenLM website and just type in the uh, license manager type that you need. And you can get a step-by-step -step instruction of what to do. Uh, yes, Brett, I see you have a question. I can unmute you if you'd like, or if you'd like to keep your privacy, then you can simply type it in the chat. There's a little uh, questions box, just do it there. I see Michelle is asking about the configurations of Sir. Okay. Uh, so if you would like uh, to configure a new server and you're not using a debug log, then the data itself has nothing to be validated against. What do I mean? Let's say that your license manager starts spewing wrong data. Happens. Start spewing errors. So how can OpenLM know that this data is valid? I don't know, just got that data, got nothing to work against. So we get the debug log to work against that. And then the OpenLM compares. It says, okay, the debug log has this, the license output has this, okay, they match. It has this, it has this, oh, they don't match. There's a problem here. If they don't match, then you'll need to sort it out. So the uh, debug log allows basically the OpenLM server to grade itself it can grade itself how well he is getting the data, how valid the data that it's getting. Uh, so this is the main report, uh, the main reason why we have the OpenLM broker data-wise. If you care about the data integrity, then yeah, it, it validates the data and also buffers information. Let's say you've got like a disconnect between the OpenLM server and broker, you got a disconnect, 
So the broker keeps uh, storing everything. It keeps working. When the connection is re-established, it, boom, it sends everything, all its buffer files, everything to the OpenOLAM server, completing all the gaps that were made along the way because of downtime. So you won't have any dime uh, downtime in your reports. Okay, guys, <clears throat> so if uh, no one has any more questions, I would thank you very much for joining me on this webinar today. Uh, I hope, hope you learned a thing or, or, or two about OpenLM that you didn't already know. I see a lot of clients here, as I mentioned. Now, probably, I hope that you found something that you didn't know, maybe about the new interface, the new installer, the new flow. And for new guys, I see here, uh, basically this is the flow of OpenLM. It's, you can install it on any Windows machine. Uh, it should be a 64-bit machine. You can get all the specifications on our website. You go to Resources, System Requirements, and then you'll know exactly what you need in, in order to install uh, OpenLM. Okay, so thanks. Bye, guys. Have a great day.